Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This video is going to be about the book, The Sugar Blues. And I have read this book twice. This book is written by a man called William Dufty, and he wrote this actually in 1975. You'd think, oh well, it's pretty old, right? But this book is so relevant to the times we're in now. It's a non-fiction book on sugar consumption and its effects on physical, mental, emotional health. With documented evidence, it goes into the history of sugar, actually how it was harvested. And it also goes into the industrial era of transition in to modern era with sugar. So William Dufty is an American writer and an activist. He starts off the book going into his own experience in his symptoms growing up and in the, I think, 20, I think he was born actually in 1920 something, I couldn't tell you right off the bat. He died in 2002 in his 80s. He learned that sugar was negatively affecting his health through a woman that he met who actually pointed out to him one day and said, that, that stuff is toxic when he's putting sugar in his coffee and he's just like, I don't know what you're talking about. And it sat with him. And then for years after, he remembered that conversation. And this book is a documentary on his just going through life, being drafted, just coming into his adult years and just seeing the effects of sugar on other people, how the government can be paid off by these companies, these corporations through the FDA, all these different kind of little loopholes to allow this into our diets essentially and this was way back then and everything from this book applies to now but it's way worse now so when he begins talking about his experience as a young boy having skin issues how people were really pulled into having sugar so stores would sell very minimal things like a block of cheese very natural whole foods these stores were back in the days 30s 40s era sugar was a very high commodity back then really expensive this shop would have have like a barrel of sugar and give it away to people for free because they knew that it would addict them to keep coming back to eventually purchasing the sugar. He also talks about his health through college, how his health deteriorated and he obviously was trying to get to the bottom of what was causing these problems for him. And then it comes to the period where he gets drafted into the military. And there's a quote here actually from this person he met. And in the summer of 1965, I met a wise man from the East, a Japanese philosopher philosopher who had just returned from several weeks in Saigon. If you really expect, this is his quote, if you really expect to conquer the North Vietnamese, he told me, you must drop army PXs on them, sugar, candy, and Coca-Cola. That will destroy them faster than bombs. And through this time where he's drafted, he ends up drafting off to in, um, Germany. And during that time, he eats whole foods, animals, you know, grains, but back then the grains aren't like the grains now. They were pulverized with stone. So you have to sort of chew them for digestion. Whereas now grains are not anything like the ancient grains. They are highly processed. And so they can actually affect the teeth. They can affect the body because they re like release these anti-nutrients like phytic acid. And people who aren't using their jaws as much are actually becoming, getting smaller jaws. Just a slight side tangent. There was actually this doctor from back in the day, I think he's passed away now, but he's well renowned in the nutrition world as Dr. Weston Price. And he actually traveled the world to evaluate people's diets, to see the difference between different countries and different people for what they ate and their physical appearance and their health. And they found like people in Africa and these tribes that didn't consume sugar had beautiful, full smiles, very healthy jaws and teeth. Whereas those in Europe would have smaller jaws due to lack of nutrition and crowded teeth. The sugar, not only is it toxic in its nature, as a, as a, it's no longer part of the sugar cane. The sugar cane is a plant, which is its own thing. To eat the sugar cane as they used to do, these tribes did, it was nothing like the processing of the crystallized structure of the sugar now. Sugar also is an anti-nutrient. So what it does, it also leaches nutrients from the body. So it pulls, it prevents the body from absorbing nutrients that it gets, like B12 and things that makes it more difficult to take in nutrients. It's almost like an antagonist. So he also says after being in Germany, when he was in Germany eating these whole foods, he was well. He was very healthy, he never got sick. And then when he returned to the United States and started picking up his old Western diet of 
West, a Western diet, which is a mixture of all these different processed foods, etc. He got sick again, and all of these old illnesses, leprosy or hemorrhoids, um, skin conditions, lethargy, all returned. He also got migraine headaches, and I threw all the sugar out of my kitchen. Then I threw out everything that had sugar in it, cereals, canned fruit, soups, bread. Since I had never really read any labels carefully, I was shocked to find the shelves were soon empty. So was the refrigerator. I began eating nothing but whole grains and vegetables, in about 48 hours I was in total agony, overcome with nausea, with a crashing migraine. If pain was a message, this was a long one, very involved, intense but in code. It took hours to break the code. I knew enough about junkies to recognise reluctantly my kinship with them. I was kicking cold turkey, the thing they talked about with such terror. After all, heroin is nothing but a chemical. They take the juice off the poppy and they refine it into opium, and then they refine it to morphine and finally to heroin. Sugar is nothing but a chemical. They take the juice off the cane or the beet and they refine it to molasses and then they refine it to brown sugar and finally to strain white crystals. The next few days brought a succession of wonders. His gums stopped bleeding, his skin began to clear up. He discovered that his bones in his, uh, bones in his feet that were buried underneath bloating were more visible. He bounced out of bed at strange hours in the morning. He was raring to go. Uh, his head seemed to be working again. He could focus and he could think clearly. And he found that his clothes got too big for him. So was his shoes because his feet were actually bloated and he didn't even realise it. And then one morning when he was shaving, he realised he had a jawline. So essentially he lost a lot of weight as well and once he got over that detoxification process from quitting sugar They started getting positive results. Did you know that the word scientist was not coined until 1840? It delves into the actual history of sugar as well. European rulers discovered that their ambassadors at European court were being corrupted by the sugar habit and won over by tribes of costly spices and sugar. Some had to be withdrawn. And then of course it goes into a little bit about slavery and how slaves were used to harvest sugarcane too, which is obviously a whole other thing in itself, right? In 1515, Spanish monks offered $500 in gold as loans to anybody who would start a sugar mill. In due time, the British fleet would arrive to drive out the Spaniards. So this is what I'm getting at, okay? There's a lot of history on sugar too, to get back to even how sugar affected people way back then, they were super addicted to it, affecting wars, affecting how people behaved. Sugar pushing had become so profitable by 1660 that the British were ready to go to war to maintain their control. What I found interesting too was how at one point heroin was actually legal. So you could legally take heroin and look what heroin does to people. And it's just from a poppy, it's from a poppy plant. So you've got sugar that is legal, it's a legal drug. And the only reason why nothing has really been done about it is because it's so profitable, there's so much money in sugar. And so after reading this, I went to the shop and then I started looking at what, f I mean, I already have an idea of this stuff anyway because I don't have sugar, but the food that contains sugar, you have to wonder why does it contain sugar? You've got bread, it has sugar. So I was just like, what else has sugar? Cigarettes have sugar. Inoculations, vaccinations have sugar. Pharmaceuticals, pills, prescriptions have sugar. And baby formula has sugar. I There's a lot of things that have sugar and obviously you can find a competitive side that doesn't have sugar. And a lot of these companies own both, both competing sides, generic or whatever, because they want to own all the competition of the product. This is not this is a very blanket statement, obviously, that's not going to be run of the mill for all companies, but this is, okay, this is something that does happen. If you look at the investors of big brands like Coca-Cola and Pepsi, they're actually owned by the same people. It's like owning basically both sides of the competition. Gets into the um, anatomical effects of sugar on the body as well, on the adrenal glands and how it can burn out the adrenal glands, which makes a person more susceptible to stress, to nervous energy, to anxiety, because the, the adrenals can't handle this excess stress on their bodies. And actually even getting to the point of having not only anxiety or depression, but kind of maybe having slight schizophrenic symptoms and delusions. So when real stress comes along the person's life, they're less likely to be able to tolerate and handle it because they're already burnt out from this sugar, the excesses, the effect that they've had on the adrenal glands. From my generation, these cereal boxes have toys in them. We'd have toys in our cereal boxes and you really looked forward to having, they made it fun. But even in cereal that looks like the healthiest cereal is still a lot of sugar in them. Like t one teaspoon of sugar in one meal of just say cornflakes. Flakes has sugar in it. 
and one cup is a serving size, seven grams, so almost two teaspoons in bran flakes. Let's look at the cornflakes. Cornflakes are super dull. Sugar. Right, so one and a half cup is a serving. Four grams. All right. So it's one teaspoon for a serving. When you actually look at sugar being the common denominator in a lot of things, like I just said, sugar is in a lot of things that people wouldn't even think that sugar is in, then it makes you wonder of how many events in time have been caused by something as simple as somebody being hocked up on sugar. Just think about how bad a day, a person's day can be if they're not feeling well. They're just going through it. It changes the whole course of the day. It can change the course of somebody else's day just by being around that person. Arguments in families, disruptions, little things that just build up over time all because of sugar because if you're not hocked up on sugar the person doesn't have a lot of this in their body they're going to be more rational they're going to be able to, they're not going to be burnt out their adrenal glands are going to be working functionally so they're going to be able to be calm and take in a problem and think about it and evaluate it in a way that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do because their body is just going to be all anxious and not be able to handle it and that obviously is going to cause more problems by 1662 sugar consumption in england had zoomed from zero to some 16 million pounds a year. This in England over two centuries. Then in 1665, London was swept by a plague. More than 30,000 people died that September. So the plague, the bubonic plague we're talking about here. People who lived in the country without virtually any sugar at all seemed to escape the plague. It gets into a man called Thomas Willis as well in the 1600s who discovered the sweetness in urine and coined the term mellitus. Mel mellitus. It's like diabetes. And that's how they discovered sugar in the urine and called and problems and it goes way back to then. Like after 200 years sugar eating, especially by the rich and famous patients who could afford Dr. Willis, why not call the new disease poly polyuria saccharitis? Latin for sugar inflammation. Willis was an ardent royalist who fought against the roundheads. He eventually became private physician to King Charles II. The king, like all royal personages, since que um, good Queen Bess, was up to his neck in the lucrative sugar trade. Basically what happens is the king is ill and the doctor knows that what's causing the illness is sugar, but he can't bring himself to tell the king that sugar is affecting you because he knows how much profit the king is making through sugar and he essentially doesn't want to lose his head. So he doesn't tell the king about it. Then we're going to tuberculosis and how sugar is related to tuberculosis. I mean, this book is really informative. It gives you a whole fresh look on history and on everything that we've been told. Because you have to think as well, there's a lot of people now that are able to pay off the media. Sugar is such a big business. There's so much money in it that people can be bought off. Like, you need to write this article about this, so make this look a certain way. When, can you imagine how much money would be lost if everybody just stopped consuming anything with sugar in it? And we're talking about a lot. I wrote a part in here that people with both types of diabetes should read this book. I know it's pretty dull. I feel like I get so serious talking about things like this. This is probably one of the biggest things that causes a lot of ill health and health in people and they don't even realize it. There's actually a lot of connections between raw sugar, brown sugar, white sugar, all being the same. It's just got a different name. It's still sugar. So yeah, I get passionate about this because I know it's really affecting people and it, it is quite simple. If you can just, if people just have this information, they can really change their lives for the better. That's the other thing too cutting out sugar, the weight just drops off and it's not weight. People carrying a lot of information that is like swelling and it looks like fat and it's actually not fat, it's actually swelling. You know, growing up, if, if a person doesn't have a lot of money, you're gonna eat sh like cheaper food, food that just doesn't, it's lacking nutritional, I mean, it's gonna say it's got nutrients, but ultimately if it's got sugar added to it, sugar does pull leach nutrients from the body. So it's an oxymoron, right? I, yesterday when I went to the shop and I was looking at some of the food, I was looking at frozen food, foods that people feed their families because they don't have a lot of time, don't have money, they're working really long hours, they don't earn a lot. So they come home and they put together these little frozen meals for their family. And you've got this box that says healthy choice. Well, that's misleading. It had sugar in the back of it and it's a frozen savory meal. Why does it have sugar in it? And because they know, these companies know that sugar is very addictive. And so it's an advantage to put sugar in their food because it makes a person subconsciously come back to that food and eat it again. It's all about the money. Sugar taken every day produces a continuously over acid 
condition and more and more minerals are required from deep in the body to attempt to rectify the imbalance. Finally, in order to protect the blood, so much calcium is taken from the bones and teeth that decay and general weakening begin. Even if you can get the audiobook for somebody who just wants to know more about it, it's interesting because it goes right back to the beginning. It, it's hard to see people promoting things like energy drinks when they are so bad for people. I mean, people know this anyway. I mean, it's, it's not a shock that energy drinks are bad for us, but when you really actually know about this stuff and you start looking into the ingredients of these things, it will blow your mind. So he does end the book with some helpful information to get people started if they're interested in, in pursuing this path for better health. This is the Sugar Blues book and the book, the word I'm choosing for this book is Diabe Diabetes Mellitus. Mellitus impaired ability of the body to produce or respond to insulin and thereby maintain proper levels of sugar in the blood. This book is five stars. If anyone wants to read a book that's gonna be worth their time, this will be it. It's excellent. So thank you for being here. Um, it's a little bit more of a serious video because, and I'm so testy when it comes to stuff like this, I don't think I can't even talk about it anymore. But next week I'm doing a video on dowsing rods because energetically people can use dowsing rods to find water, find things in the ground, on the earth, and they are used in the paranormal as well for divination purposes and I thought it'd be cool to do a video on dowsing rods. That's what I'm gonna do. Before Christmas comes along I'm gonna do Christmas film videos because that's gonna be lovely. Anyway thank you for being here and um, I wish everybody well and I appreciate it. Bye!